This channel is not intended for children. Please kickstart responsibly. Hey everybody, I'm back. I'm a little bit early because I'm going to take the weekend off. It was really nice of the people at work to work extra hard just so I could have the day off. Um, so thank you to them. They don't, want, they don't watch the channel, but you know, still thank them anyway. And uh, yeah, so we're just going to get to it. We'll see what else is popping in. Only 27 campaigns this time, and one that somehow I skipped over when I was doing them on Tuesday. But uh, now that we're on top of everything, right as they come out, it's not like you're going to miss much. So we'll check that one out first. And this is the LATAM Breakout. This is about games that are being made in South America. And I think this is a pretty cool idea, uh, having things made in South America, because it's a place that has a lot of space, fairly cheap labor, and it's on both sides of the Panama Canal, which means, hey, if we want to get rid of these global problems, the shipping and everything that's going on, then uh, we might need to utilize uh, South America and other Latin American stuff. Um, yeah, looks like there's some maybe not safe for work stuff going on. <laughs> Very different uh, games, uh, very abstract in the art styles and weird things that are going on. Um, you have all these different artists and things that are represented here. It is not games first in this campaign. It is the art first in the campaign. Um, I'm hoping that... I mean, it's from Nottingham, UK, so <laughs> I'm not really sure how it all works out. If you look at the community tab, um, it's the United States. I mean, the, the it's only 15 backers from Latin America that are actually doing this. So it's like, where is the support coming from? Where is it that they're looking at? Um, seems to be people that are maybe f from generationally displaced or something like that. And they just want to support the idea of Latin American um, gaming, which is fine. Or they like the artwork or who knows. But uh, there's not a real description of how each game plays, and that would have been cool. But they're already almost funded, so maybe it's uh, the art communities in those places that are doing it. Um, it's a neat idea. Like I said, I would love to see more coming out of Latin America, Mexico, and Brazil, and Argentina, and all these places, because um, the infrastructure could be built up so that on both halves of the world, northern hemisphere and southern hemisphere eastern hemisphere western hemisphere we could continue to get our stuff made and that would be awesome then we have call of the wild which is a game for three to six players supposed to be family based and you are going to be making weird animal sounds you're going to be given a mating call or a creature to give or some other weird thing and you're going to try to figure out from these uh various creatures what they would sound like and um I hope it's funny. So, uh, you know, you got a six-legged uh, Wookiee monster, and you got a pink kangaroo rat, and a Quetzalcoatl of some vo uh, variety. And beetles don't really make a lot of noise, do they? And then some type of uh, dog dragon, maybe. Other weird things that you could find. Um, if it sparks imagination and fun, then I'm all for it. Then we have the coffee cup collection, and I was like, oh, is this a game that is about collecting coffee cups and I was about to send it to a friend I was like no these are games that fit inside coffee cups so you know like the wallet games and things that people have been uh, having come out and um, you know the postcards business cards just weird shapes mint tins um, this is just another one of those shapes so you get your dice and your papers and your pens and your pencils and all that kind of stuff but it fits within this coffee container uh, shape I don't necessarily suggest that you use it for coffee i don't know that it's food safe it might not be um but it's uh you know it's an interesting way to keep the games on the shelf or um if you even if you were to take it to work that kind of thing so again it's more of the gimmick of having games sitting in this um type of container and not a whole lot of information about how those games play uh they are not cheap so uh, there's that um but if you want it, if you like the gimmick of it, then uh, by all means, pick one up. And we got a space game, Exploration War Zone. So this is something about uh, also getting an RPG zine if you back it right away. Um, 
you play out the hexes, you got the different ships and go out and blast each other up. Uh, you have different types of hand management and um, combat system seems to be all about how to manage the hexes. So there's that. This exploration RPG, I think you could maybe use some of the stuff where it's just kind of tacked on. Uh, this is the RPG that goes along with it. It's a, a little confusing to take two separate um, games and toss them together. Uh, really, I think you could use more explanation than just, hey, here's some hexes. So uh, they're almost funded, which is fine. Uh, if it is something compatible with each other, that would be another great thing uh, to be able to reutilize your components into uh, multiple gaming experiences. And then we have a print and play uh, version of a game that uses dominoes in a tile system, like a six-sided tile system. So, uh, yeah, you know how you normally have the tops and the bottoms of the dominoes and you spin them around? Well, now you have a hexagonal version of it. You can get a print and play version and test it out and see if it's any better. Uh, or you can get them made in plastic or ceramic or whatever the, uh, I guess, cheapest domino manufacturing possible <laughs> system would be. And then Roll and Write, those are popular. We have uh, Park Deco. This one is for solo mode or you want to add some people you can. You're going to be helping to efficiently pack parking lots. Uh, there's going to be some dice and other things that will help uh, randomize it so that you can continue to play. Um, but it's an interesting concept. It's a thing that we have problems with in our modern day. And it does set a puzzle. So uh, there's also all of these other games that are rolling right if you wanted to check them out as well that you can get as part of the package from Derek Dooley every once in a while you see him pop out and he's got the the white hat and the black shirt on I always recognize the the portrait there all right and then let's take a look at resurgence this is a euro style competitive board game but it does have a solo mode post-apocalyptic world and uh it's first time creator it's um it reminds me of this War of Mine. Um, I haven't played the board game, the Awakened Realms version, but I played the uh, video game. And it has a lot of just running from sector to sector and trying to uh, survive the best way you can. Mixed with a little bit of pandemic. Um, you, the different heroes, librarian, pharmacist, as you can see there. Different survivors you can pick up. And um, you get various encounters uh yeah it's it's what you'd expect <laughs> in a post-apocalyptic game art looks okay it doesn't look like there's anything too crazy it looks like they have maybe some mutants and things that um makes you think it would fall out so perhaps it's a few years after the big fall is when it starts taking place but um you know haven't seen a lot of pretty high quality um board games in the last couple weeks so uh, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of folks out there just looking to scratch the itch and maybe this is their post-apocalypse. Maybe it'll make them happy. Then we have this game, The Spirit of Eden by Alone Editions. Um, looks pretty cool, looks interesting. But the thing that they didn't do is they have some neat little art there and they don't really make it easy to see. And I think that art does a great job of selling. Ah, oh, everything just disappeared. You guys can still see it, but I can't see it anymore. <laughs> oh, well, uh, I'll hit stop in a second. But, you know, basically, you know, you can see the art that's going on. Oh, okay. It snapped back. Crazy things happen every day, folks. Um, you can see there's different modes, different ways to play. But I'd like to see more of these uh, cards because I think that will uh, help sell the game and make it work. Uh, you got some free dice that maybe you can pick up and uh, go from there. So yeah, can't tell you much because they don't really get too much into how the game plays. Uh, the idea is um, you're trying to save the garden, I guess, from uh, invasion. And that sounds like a, like a good concept. Then we have the game of non-coincidence. Um, I'm not, I, this is another one. So if they're trying to make the idea that everything is intended, um, 
I mean, we have time moves in the direction of entropy, right? And if you move it backwards, then everything that seems random suddenly becomes ordered. So uh, maybe that's how they're doing it. Um, different ideas, ways to look at situations. Mindfulness seem maybe is part of this uh, this game to try to bring more people into that. And, you know, a lot of people have had a lot of anxiety. Um, I certainly get mad at people all the time, you know, the way that I lost my dad. Uh, you know, it just, it's going to carry with me for a long time because the, the way he went um, is going to be with us for many years to come because we just can't get enough people to jump on board and help eliminate it. So, uh, I might myself even need some type of, uh, Zen, interesting, um, peaceful type of game than, uh, way just to try to meditate and deal with the way I feel about things. And maybe that, that will help here. The uh, concept of non-coincidence means that everything happens for a reason. And if it does happen that way, then that gives a certain level of certainty or at least removes uncertainty, which can be very toxic to your, your mental state. So I think maybe, you know, for the 49 backers that uh, enjoyed it, maybe they can share this with other people if it helps them. And uh, hopefully in the next few years, more things that are helpful will pop out and uh, people will get what they need. Just letting that out there. Then we have Hexaquest, a strategic trivia game. I do love trivia games. Um, I love bar trivia and stuff like that, but, uh, you're supposed to get six diverse categories and it always feels like, um, trivial pursuit. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, this time the categories that they're offering are backpacker, which is like geography historian. So obviously history tree hugger, which would be, uh, science of biology or botany, maybe gourmet, um, fine dining movie buff, but again, as I bring up with other movie things, you don't know which country these movies are coming from because they could be super popular in a place like the UK and no one's ever heard of it in Australia. You know what I mean? Wiseman, um, anything goes, so that's a potpourri section. It's the typical things that you'd find. Um, apparently you can get other packs to go with it for children, gamers of uh, probably video game variety, and classic rock and uh, Scandalous Gossip Girl and True Crime. Maybe True Crime would be fun. A lot of people are getting into that, but it's, an, it's one of those things where it's your hobby and not another person, so it's hard to play a game with, but you know, at least they're, they're trying to come up with something interesting and different, even though the core box is pretty much Trivial Pursuit. Then here is something I don't see a lot of. This is the battle for Primasol Bridge. It is a campaign taking place in Sicily in 1943 that is meant to be attached to another game. But they're not telling you what game it should go to. It should be able to go to any game. So you pick up the book and it gives you some background and some rules of engagement and things that may have happened during the, the fight, a little bit of maps and all that kind of stuff. So it's a way of extending if there's a war game that you like and you just wanted to be maybe play another scenario inside of it then this is kind of a swiss army knife to help you do that and it's something that's worked for rpgs why wouldn't it work for war games and then we have the dx monsters trading card game and um i was in a discussion earlier this week in the comments about trading card games and kickstarter and while it basically looks like a lot of what you find in the Pokemon games and other things like that, um, as you know, that's a, just a different Squirtle. You know what I mean? Um, the thing of it is, is Kickstarter is difficult enough on its own. You don't know if you're going to get it. You don't know if it's going to come out. You're just kind of backing the hope of the idea for it to exist. And imagine you did that and you took that level of risk and you bought a, tr a card game and you didn't get the card you wanted. So you spent all the money up front, didn't get any of those retail discounts, and you still didn't get the fancy cards because it's randomized per booster pack. You'd feel cheated, which is why these 
types of games have a really, really hard time in the crowdsourced world. You kind of need to know if you're going to be at the front of the line, you're going to get the good cards. So um, I would continue to suggest to people that think that they're going to come out with the next great uh, trading card game to package it in a way that is not a trading card game for Kickstarter. Get your prints done or whatever it is you need to do and then um, come up with a booster idea after that. So once you get your foot in the door. And this game is doing insane. Uh, Weather Machine by Vital Lacerda and Ian O'Toole. But it's not produced by them. It's coming out from Eagle Games. And it had a bunch of cool looking meeples as you saw there in the beginning. And then you got this uh, fancy board. And I guess you're going to be doing something in a steampunk variety maybe. Of uh, trying to control the weather. I'm not sure what it's based on. But apparently there's a lot of fans of it already ready to go. Uh, I don't know if they're fans of Eagle Games or if this is maybe based on a book or cartoon or something. But um, yeah, you can give it a shot in Tabletopia and see why it's so popular. And we've got a lot of white space, wherever that was for. And you can pick up your own uh, fun looking meeples all right there. So they have upgrades for metal machine parts. That's pretty cool. You get an alien invasion on Mars. Uh, Kanban, Escape Plan, all these other uh, games that have come out from Eagle Games, I guess, uh, that you can add on if you wanted to. So, yeah, if you uh, need to get your Steampunk Factory going on, then this might be the fun way to do it. Lots of people have, will be joining you. And then something that's popular, and I don't know why, are goats right now. People are all over it. Um, I mean, I think they taste great. But they've been popular in games and yoga and all this other stuff. So now we got the Great Goat Wars. Um, it's a card game about button heads, maybe, on a farm. So uh, simple graphics, simple uh, artwork. Um, so it feels like it's skewing younger in the, the age range. And maybe that... Uh, is it to its detriment of why it hasn't uh, funded uh, quite as much as it probably should have by now? I mean, they are showing what all the cards are. Um, they just need to go a little more in-depth and show how the game plays. Maybe that'll help them. People that come with their own uh, built-in audience is Heresy Lab. They've been moving into the fantasy football stuff. And these are the Hussar, uh, the Amber Hussarias. And... Um, if you need yourself a fantasy football team that is made up of people from the former uh, country of Russia before the Soviet Union, I think is where these folks come from, around those areas, Slavic countries, then maybe that'll help you out. They have cheerleaders and other things as part of their uh, stretch goals. So, yeah, if you're into this fantasy football game, I've yet to see it played, but the models I always see look uh, pretty darn sweet. So maybe you would be uh, interested in picking this up. I normally don't cover the enamel pin uh, campaigns because I have no idea why people want them or what they do with them. Uh, but the dice stuff, I understand those. Throw those together. This is a combination of the two. And it is some type of uh, holiday grab bag. So you can get all these different types of holiday themed majigs and it will ship in december so if you get on it now then uh, they'll have enough time to to give you whatever your random thing is uh it's metal d20s with all this crazy holiday themed stuff on it and like i said these various pins and speaking of dice we got more of them these are handmade resin rpg dice polygons blah 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 so you get d2 to d20 in uh, various sizes so you don't get the typical pyramidal uh, d4 instead you have this one that's right here that is more gem shaped i guess uh 48 dollars for a set so these are not cheap uh probably because they're handmade and painted and all that kind of cool stuff so yeah if you like the color you like the idea get it then we have uh, some more British Light Dragoons. We've been seeing some more Napoleonic-era 
um, British troops in India pop in, and this just happens to be the latest version of that. Uh, so uh, if you are currently having this type of campaign or you need this uh, type of folks to go with it, you know, the specialized hats or whatever the case is that sets these folks apart, then uh, maybe you'll want to jump in and pick them all up. So it looks like, um, yeah, standard cannons and muskets and a couple of long rifles and things like that thrown in with elephants that are carrying around the cannons. And it seems like it'd be interesting to study and recreate. So, yeah, if you're into it, you already know what you need. And maybe it's some of these. I'm not sure what SideQuest 2021 is, but I'll have to check it out, I guess. Maybe it is a, uh, a thing like ZineQuest. This one is Merger, and it is a single-player RPG about macrocosmic corporate horror. Um, the corporate, the more you find out about the corporate world, it already is a uh, macroscopic horror. So, um, yeah, maybe it fits right in. If uh, you are already into cosmic horror um, and Call of Cthulhu and stuff like that, and then you're also studying uh, macro econ. Maybe this is a good way to merge it all together. If you're playing PAX Incorporated uh, and you have that type of thing already in your uh, RPG space, then maybe this will work for you too. And uh, there's you think illithids are soulless? No, no, no. Corporations are soulless. And then for Mark Borg, Bone Heart Crusaders. You're going to make a crusade into the Valley of the Unfortunate Dead. So, um, that sounds awesome. It's a, it's a great tagline for different things. You have a soul oven. You've got uh, whatever this crazy uh, sewer or alien thing is. Um, you have the tanks and other crazy things that you find in Morkborg. In this uh, unique art style that is somehow abstract and sometimes um i don't you know like pop art at the same time yeah it works really well speaking of art maybe you would like some help with yours and that's what manipedia is about i have yet to be able to go through the books that i bought i just i got some from these guys from the last campaign and uh then all the other life stuff got in the way and i haven't been able to check it out um but they I flipped through one of the books. The artwork's all real, you know, the photography that they do is all real good. Um, this is specifically supposed to be for painting techniques for gamers to be able to get to the table. So it's not really for the diorama people as much as the tabletop, get it done and, you know, get it out there and just make sure it looks cool. Um, I'm not sure if any of this is overlapped with uh, the previous releases. So. Uh, you'll have to do a little bit more research to find that out. Although they sell paints, they sell all kinds of products that would go along with it. So it's not just that you're buying the books. You might be able to get some related um, materials to go with it to help you. Like when they reference something, then you'll be able to have it at hand. It is not cheap, though. N the paint and stuff never is. And with Tumbleweed, we have a 3D printable tabletop RPG where uh, the Weird West meets Aliens and the Undead. So there you go. You get to check out some crazy looking uh, Cthulhu-esque, possibly snake people. Um, this dude is like Cthulhu meets Chippendales, right? So <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Um, yeah, it is a a crazy concept. They're putting the weird in the weird west for sure. Uh, the various skeletons and all the other th neat things that might fit along with it. I don't know. These are human skeletons though. These might be those uh, illithid ske uh, skeletons. And it looks like there's some of these uh, available in Thingiverse as test prints if you wanted to give that a go. But if you think this is cool and you want your... Uh, Chippendale's uh, illithid going on, then uh, by all means, have a blast. Then for the old school to the new school, we have Solar Sanctuary of the Cannibal Corpse has been remastered with information so that it can be updated to 5e 
or utilized in whatever version of old school essentials or D and D that you've got that you like. And you got some uh, plague doctors and chickens and other crazy things. What does the about say? It's about a plague. So, you know, something that feels normal. And we have the ruins of Hollow Hills. This is three printable terrain that should work pretty well on whatever type of printer you got. It says FDM is good to go. And that is helpful because resin can also be expensive. Um, but these are some pretty neat looking buildings and ruins. I'd say maybe save the uh, characters for the resin. But uh, the, the rest of the terrain and things you definitely can do FDM with. Some dead animals just sitting on the on the corpses with on the ground. Um, types of coffins and other weird things that you might find in, in an abandoned space uh, after a raid of some variety. And very immersive if you want to set up a mystery of some kind to go find the big bad. And when you find the big bad, you might need to assassinate them. In which case, the Book of Assassin and Criminal Contracts... Could come in handy so that's what these tools are for um, finding people that uh, need to be dealt with in one way or another it gives you some story hooks and other things that you can do um, you may not always have a good NPC to have to hunt down and being a rogue can be uh, difficult and challenging for DMs because it's always about outthinking the situation and um, that means you've got to be very many steps ahead and make it just right or else it's going to feel too easy. So this can uh, maybe help s skip a few steps and borrow some stuff from the book. Help you out. Artwork looks alright. Not the most expensive thing in the world. So that might help you get started. And uh, enjoying your in cr new criminal career with your buddies and your game. Then we have a tabletop magnetic wood system for terrain. And see, they have little neodymium magnets thrown into it. I'm not sure if the tiles themselves have uh, a strong magnetic layer, or if they're just got some ferrous material thrown in with it on the bottoms to make it easy for you. But being made out of natural wood is a plus. It's pretty awesome. So, yeah, looks like you're using maybe some layers of balsa or uh, MDF or HDF in order to. Uh, produce the cool looking furniture that they've got there i'm sure a laser printer or a laser scanner or a laser engraver that's the word i'm looking for will be helpful if you had to make more of these then if you want to scale it up in time you got the dakota command post for world war ii 3d printable this is uh belgium 1944 battle of the bulge and uh, you get some buildings that you can blow up they have them before and they have after and uh they look pretty cool. So whether you're running trains or trying to make your best historical background at war system happening, then uh, this should look pretty cool. And, you know, when you get it all painted, look uh, exceptional. And then we have Ascend from Darkness. And um, it just seems like a lot of promises without a lot of... Uh, ideas and solutions on how to fix it just promises of hey you don't like these things in your uh, rpgs but the things that they have could be easily fixed by an experienced dm party member or you know that kind of thing uh but wait no more because they're going to try to fix it it's a d20 system we've got plenty of those and um i just don't quite get what they're trying to be that's special or different they're just trying to say that they're going to be better so it's up to you to figure out if any of that's going to be true i hope they get it all worked out and uh you know make it do its thing um the big rpgs out there were never really meant to be your only rpg they're just meant to be the one that hooks you and gets you started and then everybody can find the thing that uh most complements their experience so you'll start with the dungeons and dragons and then maybe you'll move on to palladium or or um even pathfinder or uh starfinder or any of those other types of games that are slightly uh different and then working up and up and up in complexity until you get your own homebrew that you're happy with so 
yeah. If you want to check it out, no one's going to stop you. I'm not going to stop anybody. I'm going to go straight to bed. That's what I'm doing. So uh, I'll get this episode out. You'll have it sometime in the afternoon on Friday, I'm sure. And I hope you have a wonderful weekend. I'm going to try to enjoy mine. If you feel like liking and subscribing, that's always helpful. And uh, otherwise, I hope you have a good one. Take it easy.